I remember back when I was in high school, during my junior year, a new kid joined two of my classes about midway through the semester. It was the first semester of the school year, and out of nowhere he was just in my class one day. His name was Justin, and he sat next to me in one of the classes because there happened to be an open seat. I didn't really know where he had come from or why he had suddenly started going to my school, but as the semester went on, I sort of became friends with him. We didn't really have much in common, and he seemed a little bit weird, but we did sit next to each other in a class and also had the other class together, so he would often talk to me during class, and we would sometimes talk in the other one as well. Overall, I never knew him very well. I did ask him a few questions about himself. For example, I asked him what school he had come from before my high school. I also asked him if he had just moved to the area. He named a school that I had never heard of before and said that he had recently moved there. But aside from that, he didn't really share much about himself. Still, I was friendly with him and I didn't mind talking to him here and there. He did get a little bit annoying though because during the class where we sat next to each other, he would make a lot of comments. I figured that I might be one of the first people that he met in our city though. After probably like two or three weeks of him going to the school, he invited me to hang out. He said that I should come over to his house that night around 7 or 8. At first, in my head, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to, but I said yes because I realized I may as well hang out with him at least once. After school, I went home and then he texted me at some time that night to come over. He gave me his address and I got directions to go there. I had a car at this point and I drove to Justin's house which took maybe 10 minutes. He lived in a neighborhood that was not the greatest but had a lot of smaller houses in it. I parked and then texted Justin that I was there. He did not respond right away so I got out of the car and then walked to the front door and knocked on it. There was no response for at least a minute. I texted Justin again and he told me to come inside. So I opened the door which was unlocked and then went in. After getting inside of his house, at first it seemed like nobody was home. Basically all the lights were off and I did not think that his parents were there. I called out saying hi but didn't hear anything back at all. But there was what appeared to be a door leading to the basement that was open a little. So I took a couple of steps inside of his house and then I started to hear a noise. It sounded like a TV or maybe a video game, but I could barely hear it and it was coming from far away. When I got closer to the basement door, I realized that's where the sound was coming from. I figured Justin must be playing video games down in the basement because I knew that he liked to play COD. I started heading down the basement stairs. The farther down I got, the louder the noises were and I knew Justin had to be there. However, it was completely dark down there and I literally could barely see anything. I didn't know where the light switches were or anything, so I just followed the sounds. Soon, I made it to the bottom of the stairs and headed to what looked like a hallway. I could only see some edges of the walls. As I was walking over there, I loudly asked Justin where he was and said that I was there, but I didn't get a response, which seemed kind of weird. A few seconds after that, as I was walking, I suddenly felt myself getting shoved from behind. I was pushed so hard that I fell forward onto the ground. After falling down, I heard some laughter from whoever pushed me. I looked, but it was so dark that I couldn't see who it was. They also quickly moved away, and I started to get to my feet, but then I was pushed again from behind. Then when I was down, I got kicked in the legs. I heard more laughter from whoever this was. I quickly got to my feet again and this time ran away to try to go back to the stairs. I heard somebody else moving down there, and I tried my best not to run into anything. I never thought to take out my phone and use it for light or anything, but I also didn't really have much time for that. After running back towards the stairs, I was luckily able to make it. I sort of tripped over the first part of the stairs, but I caught myself. I then ran up and left the house. I ran all the way back to my car and then drove home. I texted Justin when I got back, asking him what on earth that was all about. He didn't respond though. The next day was a Saturday, so we didn't have school, and the following Monday, he was in class. However, I did not feel like saying anything to him and just ignored him, and he did the same to me. Normally, he would talk to me and was borderline annoying because I didn't really have much interest in many of the things he would talk about. This day, he said nothing at all. 
and it remained that way for the next few days as well. And randomly after that, he just wasn't in class anymore. He must have changed schools again or something, and I never saw him again. I still wonder what went on in his basement. I believe that was him pushing me, and it makes me angry. I'm glad that I was able to get away though. This is something that happened back when I was in high school. I'm a female and was a senior during this time. School got out every day at 2.40 p.m. During this time, for about 10 minutes, it would just be crazy on campus. The school was fairly large and everybody would be scrambling to get out of there. The locker commons and hallways were very crowded and then everybody would leave the school. But one day I was able to leave school early. I was in an advanced class during the final period of the day, and it only had about 15 students in it. We had a really big test that day, and that was the only thing that we had. When we finished, our teacher said that if we drove ourselves to school, we could just leave. Most of the time, even if there was nothing to do in class, in high school the teacher would not let you leave until the bell. So this was really nice, and I got done with my test about 10 minutes before the class would normally get out. I left the classroom and then went to my locker. Then I walked out to the parking lot. During this time, I parked in the main student's parking lot, which was at the west end of the school and also sort of behind it. After leaving the school, I was walking to my car and it was strange to be leaving without tons of other people around. Normally, there was hundreds of kids going to their cars and there would be a traffic jam to leave campus. But now I could actually take my time. I remember looking around, but when I did, I noticed something a little weird. There was a small wooded area at the back corner of the parking lot behind it, and there was a man standing there to the side of a tree. He was looking in my direction, and he was wearing sunglasses. It looked pretty strange, because it seemed like he was coming out of the woods. The guy was too old to be a student as well. I looked back to him, and he then moved behind a tree and out of my sight. I continued to my car and then got inside and drove home. I didn't think much more about it after that. But the next day after school, I was walking to my car again. This time, I left school at the normal time with everybody else, and there were tons of other people around. When I was walking to my car, for some reason, I happened to remember the previous day and seeing the weird guy in the woods. Maybe it was just because I was walking to my car again, but I decided to look over to the woods once more, thinking there was no chance that the guy would be there again but he actually was. The same guy was in the same exact spot, and it was really hard to notice him or see him at all unless you were looking for him. He was halfway behind a tree. I was wondering who on earth this guy was and what he was doing. I kept looking at him as I walked to my car, and the guy seemed to actually be looking at me. Soon though, he disappeared behind a tree again. After that, I continued to my car and drove home. It was really strange, but I didn't think too much more about it until the next day. This time when I was leaving school, I knew to look to the spot, but I didn't see the guy this time. He was not there like he had been the last couple of days. The next strange thing to happen was when I left school to drive home maybe two days after that. I was driving back and noticed that this one car followed me almost the entire time. I didn't notice it until maybe about halfway. There was a smaller black sedan that was driving behind me, not really close or anything, but the car did stick with me going into the area where I live, which was normally very quiet. I lived in a large neighborhood, but it was also a very quiet neighborhood. I had to make several turns in the very residential area, and we were the only two cars on the road. I looked back and noticed that the driver was wearing sunglasses. Could this be the same man? I didn't know, but it did seem strange. At my street, I turned onto it, and so did the car following me. I wasn't sure what to do at the time. I just drove to my house and pulled into the driveway. Luckily, the car did not pull in after me, and it kept going. I was very relieved. I went inside after that. For the next few hours, things went by pretty normally. That evening, though, I was in my bedroom sitting at my desk. There was a window in my bedroom, which looked out to the front yard and to the street. I remember noticing that there was a guy walking down the street. It didn't take long until I recognized him. He was wearing sunglasses, and it appeared to be the same man who was at my school, 
and probably followed me home. He was slowly walking sort of down our street, and I noticed him looking in the direction of our house. When I realized this, I left my bedroom and found my parents in the living room. I told them the whole story of everything. They went to look out of a front window after that. Now at this point, I expected the man to be long gone, but when we looked out of the window, he was actually still in sight. He was walking by, now on the other side of the street, very slowly. My dad then left the house and started walking over to the guy. I couldn't hear what was being said, but it sounded like my dad was yelling at the man. And then I saw the guy start sprinting away. He went down the street and out of sight. My dad came back in after that and said that the guy got away from him. After that, the man did not come back towards our house again, and I never saw him at the school either. But I did report him to my school counselor, so if the guy ever returned, he probably would be caught. I really don't know who he was, but I'm glad that I saw him out of my window that night, or who knows what would have happened. This is back when I was a high school freshman. I remember that during this time, I would get a ride to school with my older brother, who was a senior. We both played sports, but different ones. So one day, maybe a couple of months into the school year, we both had practice, but mine was early after school, and my brother's was later. When my practice got done that day, it was probably like 5 p.m., and my brother's practice was still going. All my teammates left, except for one. One of my good friends on the team, Jack, was in a similar situation. His brother was also practicing. We sat around and were talking outside of the gym areas for a while. Then we got bored and decided to walk around. School had been done for hours, so at this point, everybody was gone and the place was almost completely empty. We started just talking and walking around random hallways, just kind of wandering around. We were both freshmen and still fairly new to the school, but knew most of the place pretty well. I remember after walking around for a while, we found this staircase that neither of us knew about. It was in an older wing of the school, and there were doors in front of the stairway, but one of the doors was open. We were both curious, so we walked inside and started going down the stairs. They led to, I guess, what was the basement of the school. I wasn't even aware that the school had a basement. At the time, I was thinking it probably wasn't used for anything except maybe storage. When we both got down there, it was really dark. Most of the lights were off, but we found this one switch, and a few lights to the hallway turned on. It was basically just one hallway with a few rooms in it. We walked down it and were just looking around. I think we were both just surprised that we even had a basement in our school. We were talking to each other and just looking around, when towards the end of the hallway we heard a door open. This really startled us because we had no idea that anybody else was down here. I mean, all the lights had been off, and this place didn't really seem like it was in use. The next thing that I knew, this guy walked out from a room and into the hallway. We both didn't know who this guy was and did not recognize him. He clearly did not work for the school. He was wearing nothing that would indicate that he was a custodian either. The guy had really short hair and was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. He looked out at us but did not say anything. Then, after us both staring at each other for a few moments, the man started walking in our direction. The way that he was walking was sort of aggressive, if that makes any sense. As he was approaching, he told us to come to him. We both had a bad feeling about it though, and just turned around and quickly went back upstairs. After we had made it to the top, we both went away from that hallway. The man did not come upstairs and remained in the basement. We continued to walk far away. For the next 20 minutes or so, we walked up and down random empty hallways and talked what about what had happened. Soon though, we got curious and decided to head back, not to go into the basement, but just to see into the hallway. When we returned, both of the doors leading to the basement were shut. I actually tried to open one, but it wouldn't open and seemed to be locked. We then walked away and headed back over towards the gyms. We then waited there until our brothers were done with practice. After that happened, I wondered who the guy was and what he was doing down there. I never saw him again. I also wasn't aware of the basement area being in any sort of use to the school during my entire time there, and I never went back down there again.
For some background, I'm a female and was a junior in high school at the time of this story. The school I went to was fairly large and had lots of other students. I would say that I had a decent amount of other friends and my locker was near several of them. Each grade kind of had their lockers together in a certain area. The juniors were in a large locker common area near the science department. It was sort of at one end of the school. So the story really begins one day when I was at my locker in between classes. None of my friends were really around at that time, and there was a little space between me and everybody else. It would get extremely crowded during some times of the day there, so much so that it was hard to even open the lockers sometimes. It was nice that it wasn't busy this time, but then I noticed that there was this guy standing near my locker. I had never seen him before and wasn't sure where he had come from. I assumed that he was a senior because he looked older. He approached me when I was at my locker and said hi. Then he proceeded to start a conversation with me. He asked me to skip class and leave school with him, saying we could hang out. Now, I didn't even know this guy, and I took school very serious, so I did not want to skip. I told him no, I had to go to class, and I said that he should do the same. He asked me to hang out with him after school then, and I said no, I was busy. I really did not want to hang out with him at all and was not interested. I then left the guy and said that I had to go to class now. He was still at my locker when I walked away. For the rest of that school day, I didn't see him, but the next day, he was back. I got done with the class and went to my locker only to find him there. He was standing right in front of it, kind of blocking it from me. I asked him to move and he started asking to hang out again. He knew my name somehow and I kept telling him that I didn't want to hang out. Luckily, this time, some of my friends were around. When he didn't move, several of them asked him, and he finally did. After he left, I asked my friends who he was, and none of them knew anything about him. We all just assumed that he was a senior, and I just hoped that he would leave me alone. Well, later that day, after school, I was stopping at my locker before going home. When I did, the same guy was there. This time, he asked if I needed a ride home, and of course, I said no. I drove to and from school every day. He tried convincing me, but I just walked away from him. Then I left school. Now, after this, I did not see him for a while, but I found out that he did not even go to our school. Apparently, he had tried getting several other girls to hang out with him as well. One of them reported him for harassment after he apparently followed her into a restroom. That's when they found out he wasn't a student. Nobody really knew who he was until like a week or two later. One of my friends showed me this news story online. It was of an attempted kidnapping of a local woman, which luckily the woman got away. The man was caught and I saw that it was the same guy. It turns out he was 23 and not even in high school at all. No wonder he looked older. I really couldn't believe it and I feel grateful that everybody ended up being all right and that the man was caught. I used to walk to and from school every day. This was when I was in high school and during my freshman and sophomore years. Obviously, I didn't have my driver's license yet, but I also didn't like to ride the bus. We luckily lived close enough that I could walk to school and we lived in a warmer climate where the winters were very mild. It would take me about 15 minutes to walk to the school and I had no problem with it at all. We lived in a residential neighborhood and I would take a couple of sidewalks to the high school. That was basically it. Most days, I would walk all by myself, and at seven o'clock in the morning, things were very quiet. The roads were not very busy either, other than the occasional car passing by. One morning, I was walking to school like any other day. I would say that I was about halfway there when I heard a vehicle approaching. To this point, there had been maybe a few cars here and there driving by, but I didn't really notice. So this car, I did notice, because it started driving closer to me and slow like it was going to pull over. And then surprisingly, it did pull over. I looked over to the car, wondering who it was. The window rolled down, and there was a man behind the wheel. He asked me if I could use a lift to class. Clearly, I knew better than to get a ride from a stranger, and I said no. The man said something like, it was probably a really long walk, but I still said no thanks. 
At that point, he did drive away. I walked the rest of the way, wondering if the man could have been dangerous or if he was just trying to be nice. He should know better, though, than to offer random high school kids rides. So after school that day, I was walking home. This was the very same day. So I was by myself on the sidewalk, and when I was nearing my neighborhood, but still a few minutes away, a car approached again. I didn't really think to notice if it was the same one, but I soon realized that it was. The car slowed down and went about as slow as I was walking. Once more, a man rolled down the window, and when I looked, I noticed that it was the same guy. He then asked me if I needed a ride. I told him no again, I did not need a ride. He said okay, and then drove off. I really couldn't believe that the guy had tried to get me to go into his car before and after school. Obviously, I was hoping that I would never see him again, but that was not the case. The very next morning, I was walking to school. Now, looking back, it's easy to say that I should have told somebody, and I should have took more precautions, but for some reason, being a young high schooler, I thought the man would not be back. I figured he would have gotten the hint, and the previous day would probably be the only day that I would see him. So as I walked to school on this morning, I was about halfway there, and I saw a car pass me by, which looked like the man's car. I got a bad feeling. The car passed me though, and for a moment, I felt relieved. But then, the car pulled over to the side of the road, about 40 or 50 feet in front of me. And this time, it completely pulled over. It stopped, and it looked like the engine was turning off. I had a terrible feeling. It seemed as though the man may get out. So I quickly turned and went into a random person's front yard. The sun was still sort of rising, so it was mostly dark out. I then went into the neighbor's backyard, and then cut through a few more properties. I knew the area really well and I continued to cut through more people's yards and take random streets. I was able to make it all the way to school like that and did not see the man or his car for the rest of the way. When I got to school, I called my mom and told her about it, and I also told all my school friends throughout the day. Everybody was concerned for me and said that I should not walk home that day. My mom was working and offered to leave her job early, but I was able to get a ride with my friend Amanda. So after school, I rode on Amanda's bus with her and went to her house. The bus didn't go to my house at all because we had told the school that I was not going to be using it, so I wasn't assigned to a bus at all. So my mom picked me up from Amanda's and then we contacted the school so I could be on a bus. After that, I rode the bus to and from school every day for the rest of the semester. Then I was able to get my driver's license and drove to school for the rest of my high school career. Luckily, I never saw that man again.